You see, usually when the United States murders journalists, they say, oh, it was a mistake, or the journalist shouldn't have been there. We crossed the Rubicon in April of 1999, and your family members were murdered because it was publicly stated by the most powerful government officials in Europe and the United States that it was a legitimate military target. Soon after that, Al Jazeera was bombed in Afghanistan. And after that, their top correspondent in Baghdad was murdered in a direct hit by the United States. The Palestine Hotel in Baghdad was shelled and three journalists were killed, including a Russian, sorry, including a Ukrainian cameraman for the Reuters news agency and two others. The United States talks a good game about press freedom. And right now with Trump in power, a lot of journalists are patting themselves on the back how brave they are questioning Donald Trump. None of them, not one of them, would question Bill Clinton about why he murdered 16 media workers. It's easy to call yourself a brave journalist when a cartoonish villain like Trump is in power. Try calling out Obama for jailing journalists. Try calling out Clinton for murdering journalists. That's when you're brave, when you have spine, not with some cartoon in the White House, but when someone you say, oh, that's a smart American president. The Clinton administration operated a murder incorporated here in Yugoslavia, killing civilians, using depleted uranium munitions, bombing bridges, bombing homes. I was in the homes of many people in Serbia and in Kosovo, Albanians, who had their homes utterly destroyed by NATO bombs. And I understand, I understand why the families of the murdered RTS workers want to look inward for part of the responsibility for this. I understand why they want to say, who ordered our loved ones to stay in that building? But let's remember, it was a war crime to bomb that building and the most culpable party, the most culpable party, are the men who from thousands of miles away decided that your 16 loved ones were going to die that day. Were they propagandists for Milosevic? Was Ksenia Bankovic, was she a propagandist for Slobodan Milosevic or was she a media worker doing her job? She was a media worker doing her job. The night of the awards ceremony that our friend referred to, I was in New York with my colleague Amy Goodman who's one of the greatest independent journalists in the United States. She hosts a daily news show called Democracy Now. And we were there to receive an award for best foreign reporting for an expose that we had done uh, about the Chevron Oil Corporation murdering indigenous people in the Niger Delta of Nigeria. And Richard Holbrook was the keynote speaker. We weren't even gonna go to that ceremony that night. We aren't big on going to receive awards, we're about journalism. But we went there because Richard Holbrook was what we called the trigger man on the war in Yugoslavia. He delivered the ultimatum to Slobodan Milosevic following the Rambouillet Accords. And we went to that award ceremony not to receive our awards and pat ourselves on the back, but because as journalists we wanted to question this key figure in the US war machine that was being unleashed on Serbia. And as he got up to speak, he announced to the crowd that Serbian television had been bombed off the air. And he said that it was a tremendous victory. And a smattering of journalists, particularly those at the most important tables, applauded. And I was sickened. I was sickened, not by Richard Holbrook. I knew who he was. I knew who Richard Holbrook was. But sickened that some journalists would applaud at the announcement from a government official that a media outlet had been bombed. And I disrupted Richard Holbrook's speech. I didn't make it to the podium. I made it to the stage when I was grabbed by security. And I questioned Holbrook about the lie that the United States was telling about Ron Bouillet. And I questioned him about the fact that what the United States was asking the Yugoslav government to sign at the time was an occupation agreement that would have given full immunity to NATO and American forces once they occupied Yugoslavia. And I stated that that would be an occupation agreement that no sovereign country in the world would accept. 
And I was grabbed by security and I called on the most famous journalist in the room that night, Tom Brokaw, who was the anchor of one of the largest newscasts in America, Leslie Stahl, one of the most famous reporters for the leading investigative news program, 60 Minutes. I said as I was being dragged away, I call on you, Tom Brokaw, and Leslie Stahl to defend my right to question Richard Holbrook on a night when he has just bragged about bombing a television station in Serbia. And Tom Brokaw, the famous newsman, every American knows who he is, he's still on TV. He stood up and he told me, you sit down. And with that security, pulled me from the room. And then my colleague Amy Goodman got up right before we were supposed to receive our award. And she questioned, Tom Bro uh, she questioned Tom Brokaw about how you could be celebrating journalism awards on a night when journalists have been murdered. We never got that award. We were both kicked out of the ceremony that night. I often remember that night because it taught me something very clearly about the nature of the United States government. It's the leading hypocrite in the world when it comes to questions of freedom because it applies them selectively. The Committee to Protect Journalists, we fought them for years to recognize your 16 family members as media workers murdered by NATO and the United States, and they have refused. Liliana Smilovich came to New York with me. We went in and we met with the head of the Committee to Protect Journalists. We argued the case. We explained to them who these people were, what their jobs were, and how their murders were war crimes. And they refused. I now call them the Committee to Protect Certain Journalists because they don't believe in protecting all journalists. They determine which way the wind is blowing. What do the powerful nations in the world say about that media outlet? Is it real journalism or is it propaganda? During that war, the 78th day bombing of your country, CNN and other networks in the United States operated as state television. The difference between RTS and CNN at that time was that RTS publicly acknowledged it was state media. CNN tried to pretend that it was objective, and yet the Pentagon had interns in the CNN newsroom during the bombing of your country. There is a war on journalists in this world. All major governments are going to war. Some of them are assassinating journalists. Some of them are imprisoning journalists. Some of them are harassing journalists. But what the United States did to your people, to your 16 family members, is a cold-blooded, calculated, premeditated act of murder. It was a war crime, and no one from the West, not one of these people, has ever been held responsible. I was very humbled to receive the invitation to come and be with all of you, particularly with those of you whose family members were murdered by the government of my country. And I pray and hope that justice is served on behalf of your loved ones. Because despite what Barack Obama said when he first became president, that we have to look forward, not backward, when it comes to crimes. He was talking about the crimes of the CIA. The only way you hold the powerful accountable is by looking backwards and by saying, who did this? Who told them to do it? Why did they do it? I know that right now we finally have some clarity on who murdered Slavko Cheruvia, and that there are people connected to state security who are convicted and in the process of uh, being sentenced for the final time. That's a tremendous step forward in accountability, but how much higher did it go? Who else in the Serbian government knew about this plot? We can't ask Milosevic, he's dead. We can't ask his wife, she's dead. But who else in the Serbian government knew? Who ordered the killing of Slavko Cherubia? That's an important question. This isn't just about getting the people who pulled the trigger or placed the car bomb. It's about going as high up as the plot itself went. In the case of Slavko Cherubia, the question should be, still be asked. In the case of the bombing of RTS and the murder of those journalists, Wesley Clark and his friends should never be allowed to set foot in public without someone coming up to them and saying, why did you murder those 16 media workers? So again, I reiterate, to the families of the 16 people murdered in cold blood intentionally by my government, I apologize to you.